Mr. President, Karibu, yes, how are you? Karibu, very well. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, uh, Karibu. You're keeping well? Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. is presently confronted with a daunting array of multifaceted challenges which range from the pandemic recovery to the existential threat of climate change. There is also the prevailing adverse financial environment characterized by increasing interest rates and looming debt distress affecting Africa and the many other regions, not forgetting the complex security implications of a delicate geopolitical crisis. At this time, your leadership as members of this House is more vital than ever to guide and support all other institutions of the Africa Union in pursuit of a new, ambitious, and inspiring vision. It is a time to be bold, to be strong and resolute, enough to confront these challenges with greater unity and greater commitment. It is time to extend our forefathers' Pan-African dream into a brave new world in order to bequeath the people of Africa and our future generations a much better, more secure, and prosperous Africa that plays its role and makes its contribution in full to global affairs. And we must be bold because we are the continent of the future. We are the continent of young people hungry for better life and a clear role in the world affairs. Unfortunately, however, the discursive profile of the continent has too often been focused on the challenges and the difficulties we face and the assistance we need in a way that depicts us as chronically subordinate, eternally vulnerable, and perpetually incapable. As a consequence, an emerging psychology of victimhood implicates both African and global leadership in a politics of pity and helplessness. It also denies the world's youngest continent, repository of unparalleled abundance, the agency to articulate appropriate solutions for its own problems and to offer its unique, indispensable contribution on the broader global stage. I am persuaded that our generation of African leaders has the historic mandate to retire this unhelpful profile and in its place articulate a more accurate and compelling portrait of Africa that is both faithful to fact yet also developmentally inspirational through this fundamental shift, we have the opportunity to empower and mobilize our people to drive transformation, attract investment, and inspire partnerships and collaborations across the world. I see a tremendously decisive role for yourselves as members of the Pan-African Parliament since you represent the voices of Africans on all issues pertaining to every sphere and sector of individual and collective endeavor. Please, don't let us down. The whole reform agenda around the AU is a necessary imperative. It is not possible for us as states, as governments, to hold all the power and expect the African Union to function. 
we must be bold enough to delegate some of the powers of our nations to the collective body of the African Union. That is what other progressive unions have done. It is not possible for us to continue to engage with the rest of the world the way we are doing. The budget of Africa Union, to a good extent, is funded by development partners. What does it say about our ability to make our own decisions? It is said, he who pays the piper calls the tune. As things stand today, and I say this with tremendous respect, the Africa Commission Chair, the Africa Union Commission Chair, does not have what it takes to prosecute the agenda for our continent. We still hold all the power as heads of state and expect the union to function. It cannot function. We have to donate some of the power to the collective authority of the union. I had occasion, let me explain to you something. I had occasion a few weeks ago to talk with a German chancellor. And he was explaining to me how Germany has donated matters trade, matters investment, to the European Union. And they have immensely benefited by working together as 27 governments, 475 million people. In our continent, we still want to keep all the powers in our little corners. How are we going to negotiate with EU as a country? You know, how are you going to negotiate? <clears throat> and this is the candid conversation we must have. The Pan-African Parliament must operate at the same level as the European Parliament. If we have, if we have to engage with the European Union on a platform as equals, the clearest path available to humanity, not just to us, available to humanity, is to relocate global industrial production capacity to Africa, and therefore meet Africa's as well as the world's growing demand for goods and services in a green fast manner that also enables the continent to leapfrog the industrial development path taken by the global north. An African green industrial capacity will not only serve global demand, but it will also decarbonize global production, thereby fulfilling humanity's most ambitious climate goals. This is the very honest conversation we want to have. We are saying we can have a win-win. in this engagement. We do not have to engage in the usual finger pointing. You caused this, you did not cause that. That's all fine. We contributed the least, that's fine. We are suffering the most, that's okay. But we can together agree on a solution that carries everybody. And that is the proposition we are having as the leadership of this continent. We are not selfish. We are willing to share, to present our resources so that we can not only solve our problem, but we can solve the global problem of climate change. 